Hey viewers, welcome back again. In this video, we will see about the concept of CAN bit monitoring and bit stuffing and its purpose in CAN network. So before we get into the video, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to avoid missing some of the interesting videos. If you have already subscribed, please do check out on my channel for the complete series of video concerning to all the CAN concepts and tools. Okay, let's get into the topic. So what is CAN bit monitoring? Every transmitter reads back its transmitted bit from the CAN bus to ensure its transmitted data integrity is called bit monitoring in definition. Imagine you have a CAN bus connected with multiple nodes and each node connected to the CAN network will act either as a transmitter or as a receiver. So if any node transmits some frame on the CAN bus, then all the other nodes will be a listeners with the transmitter itself which means transmitters also reads back the data from the CAN lines to ensure the integrity of the transmitted data. And this concept is called the CAN bit monitoring. So let, let us take an example here. We have multiple nodes connected here on the CAN bus. And imagine that EPS is a transmitter. So EPS transmits the data into the CAN bus. So uh, the purpose of the EPS is not only to transmit, but also to verify whether the transmitted data is clearly being transmitted into the CAN bus or not. For that, the EPS will again read back this data like other listeners. You see here, EPS sends the data. All the other ECUs, whichever is looking for this EPS frames will read this information. And not only those, but even this EPS ECU will also read the data to check and ensure that the data integrity is good enough. So this is called the CAN bit monitoring. We will see two cases to understand about the bit monitoring. Uh, for example, consider that EPS as a transmitter and then case one, the EPS will start to send the data, the CAN bit data as one into the CAN bus. And if the EPS again, when it reads back the data, if it reads the same bit which it sends as one as uh, the receiving data from the CAN bus, then it continues its transmission on the CAN bus. So this is case one. So let us consider that in the case two, the EPS sends the bit as one to the CAN bus and if it receives back it, the data as zero, it means that it, it has a change in the bit which it has transmitted into the CAN bus and what it has received back. So here it sends this as a bit error and because it sends it as a bit error, it stops the transmission. So this bit monitoring plays a significant role in the CAN bus arbitration where all the nodes will monitor the CAN bus and access a transmitter or receiver during the communication. Let us now see about what is CAN bit stuffing. As the name suggests, it is nothing but stuffing of bits. But how the stuffing is done? Yes, it is insertion of a bit of opposite polarities after five consecutive bits of the same polarity is called bit stuffing. So let us consider a CAN frame. So in a standard CAN frame, it contains the fields starting from the startup frame followed by the message identifier. Then we have the remote transmission request, control fields, data fields, CRC field, acknowledgement and end of frame. So remember the bit stuffing is applicable from the startup frame until the CRC field and it does not apply to the CRC delimiter or acknowledgement or end of frame since it has the fixed size. Let us take an example. Imagine you have a CAN frame with this data which needs to be transmitted in the CAN bus. If you transmit this data as such, it will lead to a bit stuff error in the CAN lines. The reason for that is it has three different portions in which there are more than five consecutive bits of same polarity. So whenever the CAN network encounters this kind of a situation, it will raise it as a stuff error on the CAN lines. So let us see how this is being avoided. Let us see with a live example of how this bit stuffing and de-stuffing is done. So imagine that you have a data here, which needs to be transmitted into the CAN bus. And if you see over here, uh, we have the first bit as zero and then followed by uh, close to around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven um, 
bit one, uh, which is consecutive, and then followed by uh, seven zeros, which is again uh, consecutive, and then we have seven more ones, which is again a consecutive. So imagine that we have this kind of a data, and let us see how the transmitter will handle the situation before it puts this information into the CAN bus. So this is where the CAN bit stuffing concept comes into play. So firstly, uh, what it does is the transmitter will look for the consecutive data and whenever it encounters that five consecutive uh, bits of same polarity, if it receives this, then uh, it will introduce this stuff bit at the sixth position. You see here, so this is the stuff bit, which is of an opposite polarity, which is zero. Uh, it's an opposite to that of the uh, bits over here. So now after introducing the stuff bit, again, it looks for the remaining um, bits and then once if it again encounters a similar situation, uh, here again the situation is something like we have five consecutive zeros as uh, so bits and then it introduces the next level of stuff bit again with an opposite polarity of one. Again, there is a situation where it encounters the five consecutive ones, then it introduces a stuff bit here with an opposite polarity and then it, it is now done with the CAN data frame. So, so the, now the uh, now it is fully stuffed and the data frame is ready to put it into the CAN bus. Now this data, the stuffed data will be uh, sent into the CAN bus. And now uh, you know that the CAN bus will be connected with multiple nodes. There are many, uh, there would be many listeners who would need this, this CAN frame. So whomever is the receiver, what they will do is they do the opposite of the can stuffing, can bit stuffing. That's nothing but de-stuffing of this stuffed bit from the can frame. So what it does is it just looks into the data and whenever if it encounters like a five consecutive uh, polarity of bits, then uh, it looks for the next bit as an opposite polarity, then it de-stuffs it. And then it takes the remaining bits again and then it looks for another situation, same similar situation and then it just de-stuffs the bit and then it takes the data. So in this way, the stuffed data frame uh, in the CAN bus will be de-stuffed by the receiver and then it will be processed after. So this is how the CAN bit stuffing and de-stuffing works. With that, we had come to the conclusion of this video. Hope you got an insight about how the CAN bit monitoring and bit stuffing is done in CAN. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos which are about to come. Thank you. See you again in another video.